Hi folks, this is Lucy Riley with Ballots for Bernie. We're coming to you again from Next Space in Berkeley. And today we've got Lori Grace with us from TrustVote.org. Lori has been um, an instrumental player in the election integrity movement. And we just want to introduce you to Lori and let her talk a little bit about her history with the movement. Lori? Well, my history has actually gone back a very long time to 2003 and four, where I was working with Beverly Harris and audit the vote after the 2004 election. And uh, many, um, uh, you know, several other organizations and uh, also the Green Party. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, it followed my actions continued in 2006, 2008, 2010, 2012, in different ways, mm -hmm. um, playing even a role in, in, in some degree of significant influence on the presidential elections. Yes. But moving aside from that, I know that you're wanting to know about this year, mm -hmm. and as soon as uh, I saw what was happening in Arizona uh, with uh, uh, the um, voter suppression and uh, and you know the votes that didn't seem to be uh, registered properly and and this sort of thing in Arizona. I knew we were going to have trouble, and I went immediately to uh, New York mm -hmm. with Bob Fitrakis to try to educate people on how to protect um, their vote because there were a lot of people that were taken off the registration lists in Arizona as well as in New York, a, a great many in New York. And uh, the um, what I observed, at least at that time, is that people didn't give much attention to this issue, mm -hmm. yet I met with um, the DFA and the PDA, the, the DFA, Democrats for America, did paid a little attention. The progressive Democrats of America paid uh, substantially more. It was a last minute thing, but um, basically no one showed up more or less to our presentations right. except two people mm -hmm. in two different events. So what's happened as a result of New York, Arizona, Kentucky, you know, California is all of a sudden energy, and I'm so grateful, energy is on election integrity in our elections. And I mean, those of us who've been involved in this field have been waiting a very long time <laughs> for something like this to happen because it's been not very many people. So we're really hoping that to have, uh, you know, to be able to provide direction, support, focus to people who, uh, many of whom were concerned, Bernie voters, to help create elections that we can trust. Yes, and it's very important mm -hmm. seeing that we only had 9% of the registered Democrats come out to vote in the primary. It's really mm -hmm. disheartening, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? That's also disheartening. Yeah. And, and we've got yeah. to reestablish mm -hmm. trust mm -hmm in our voting, um, in our election system to get people back out um, to the precinct to take part in their democracy. And Lori, we want to thank you so much for coming today and speaking mm -hmm. with us. Mm -hmm. A lot of our folks at home, our viewers <coughs> that are watching um, this afternoon, um, are new to the election integrity movement. A lot of us, um, myself included, um, thought that we could um, trust our elections processed process, especially here in the state of California. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of Bernie supporters here in California, as well as Bernie supporters across the country, mm -hmm. um, are still in a state of shock mm -hmm. because we've been um, awakened mm -hmm. to the problems. Mm -hmm. And once you become awakened to the problems, you can no longer go to sleep again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what we're inviting our folks at home to do um, is to join us in the progressive mantra of educate, agitate, demonstrate, and legislate. 
And Laura, you have been a vital player hmm. in helping um, to um, produce legislation as well as um, helping to move legislators through lawsuits mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, to realize the value in writing legislation and mm -hmm. pushing it through um, uh, both houses here in California as well as um, in Ohio. So there are two lawsuits that um, you are working on with um, folks in the legal community right now. One is in Ohio, one is in California. Well, there's Could a you... little bit more than two. Yeah, uh, sure. And I, I want you to know I'm wanting to report on other ones. Just to let you know the aftermath of mm -hmm. this election, mm -hmm. uh, and this is a sad comment on our country, We've got a lawsuit in Massachusetts, we've got one in Arizona, we've got one in Illinois, we've got uh, several in California, uh, in Arizona, I, I, um, you know, and, and this is sad. Yes. And, so and we have may, to go to this extent. And it may happen again in November. So two of the lawsuits that um, uh, are drawing a lot of attention right now mm -hmm. are the lawsuit in Ohio and mm -hmm. the lawsuit in California. Mm -hmm. And could you talk to us a little mm -hmm. bit about those suits? Sure. Well, the lawsuit in uh, Ohio, and uh, uh, I'll start with that one first. Um, I, first of all, I've worked with Bob Fitrakis since 2004 and have a lot of trust in him mm -hmm. and vice versa. He was with me in New York. Uh, for example, and where we tried to persuade voters about what they needed to do yeah. to uh, protect their registration. I suggested take a copy and a printout of your registration, you know, get it ahead of time and bring it. Uh, and if you don't have it and you can't find it, don't do it online, go to the elections office. And But this was all a little too late. But aside from that, um, I have been aware for years of something known as the red shift by uh, design that's been analyzed by statistician uh, Richard Charnin mm -hmm. uh, about how often many um, vote the that uh, the difference between the exit polls and the final election results everything seems to be pushed a bit over to the right. We call it the red shift. Uh, but this time, what we observed was between the votes in the Democratic primary, the Republican votes stayed the same, but the Democratic primary, we had um, uh, the uh, Bernie Sanders votes just before the exit poll, uh, on the exit polls, and we had the final vote totals. Mm -hmm. And even with the exit polls being adjusted throughout the day to fit the, um, the, the final vote, vote yeah. totals, the jump was so significant in 12 states between the exit polls and the final vote totals that something was going on that was very fishy. Yes. And, and so that's when we decided to start a lawsuit. Cliff Arnebeck was promising a lawsuit but didn't deliver. Bob and I were giving him, you know, the chance to create the RICO case, but and and I invested in it significantly financially, but it did not happen. So at the last minute, you know, close to the time that Bernie was going to endorse Hillary, I said, Bob, we've got to get something out here, mm -hmm. you know, um, and he submitted the day before the lawsuit against Edison Media Research, which which is uh, the exit polling company right. um, and would point out their tendency. We were going to ask for the raw data. We were going to be able to also show how they adjust it towards the vote totals of the computer. And this is a really important thing to bring forward because many people don't realize when they're watching a television program and they see how the um, Edison research uh, exit poll seems to be showing throughout the day right. that they're actually adjusted. Right. They pay attention to the computer vote totals on one side and they're adjusting the exit polls to fit the computer vote totals. Now this is different mm -hmm. than in any other country where exit polls are considered a more 
uh, reliable indication of, of an election. And for example, in 2004, uh, with the Orange Revolution in Ukraine, mm -hmm. we had international observers there, right. and the U.S. objected and viewed this as a, a stolen election because the exit polls differed by uh, about 2% from the vote totals. But here in California, or no, beyond that, in the U.S., we can have um, exit polls that are dramatically different from the vote totals, the 10%, is sometimes even more, 12%. And, uh, and this is really shows that something is profoundly mm -hmm. wrong. And just to let our viewers know at home, there is um, raw data that um, Edison has, mm -hmm. and they're not releasing. Definitely. And if we had that raw data, mm -hmm we could um, much more clearly mm -hmm. um, present a case. Mm -hmm. We need that raw data. Mm -hmm. And the, um, lost law, the legal team that is mm -hmm. protecting um, Edison mm -hmm. makes somewhere in the tune of $600 million $650 a year. million. Dollars See, oh, a year. don't let me forget that extra <laughs> $50 million, folks. Right, yeah. So basically, this legal team, <clears throat> this legal corporation, mm -hmm can keep this lawsuit tied up mm -hmm. for a decade yes, sure. and not give us the raw data. Mm -hmm. The only way we're going to get this raw data, folks, is to engage you at home and election integrity activists all over the country to demand this raw data. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That's part of it and then also to donate towards legal costs. Because yes, because it costs be a lot of money. Yeah, to we're going to be guys. we're going to be overwhelmed with uh, um, yeah. paper. The the lawyers uh, in Ohio are going to be overwhelmed with well. Stacks and the great of thing paper. about Bernie Sanders' campaign, right, mm -hmm. is that we made histor historical. Mm -hmm. We made mm -hmm. history mm -hmm. um, in March of 2016 by raising 46 million dollars. Right. For Bernie's campaign, mm -hmm. and we did it at an average donation of twenty-seven dollars. Mm -hmm. Right, and so and we know that we've got the activists out there that want to demand transparency in our elections. And, and to yeah. that effect, I want to say that TrustVote.org, we do apply for donations and appeal for them, and uh, we feel very grateful for the support so far. And um, the. Many of the donations come back in twenty-seven dollars or ten dollars or, you know, twelve and occasionally hundreds here and there, and uh, and it has really helped us keep going, and it becomes in my heart it becomes a mandate also, so it's a sense of we want to continue because yes. we care and because others care. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And together we can do mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And it doesn't even have to be a twenty-seven dollar donation, folks. We'll take five, ten, fifteen bucks. All right. Forego that yes. latte for transparency right. in your elections. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yes, that's so true. Yeah. <laughs> and and the thing is, is if we can't defeat the lawsuit, we want this spread all over the media, so that people know that. These are the people, these are the 1% that are basically managing and counting our votes and managing our elections. I mean, the computers run by Dominion and ESNS and SOE, these are all 1% style corporations worth millions and millions of dollars. Edison re Research um, is also, um, all the, the media consortium of all the television yeah. stations and the newspaper and the Associated, Associated Press is also in the 1%. Yeah. So what I wanted to say when I heard, you know, at one point Bernie encouraging everybody to get out and go for politics is if you're up in the upper levels, you know, mm -hmm. the Congress and the Senate, sure. it's harder and, and uh, something that disturbs me is that if the one percent are counting our votes and possibly doing things in the back room, you know, we really need to pay attention to that. Yes, we do. To 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 make a yes, difference. And uh, um, and so you know, 
all of us are trying to guide ways that those of us yes. who are just regular people yeah. can step forward and make a difference. Yeah. As a nurse, Lori, I can mm. relate. Mm. Um, I've seen my industry privatized. Mm. Mm. I've seen a profit mm. attached to um, what should be a human right wow. as health care. Mm. And what we're seeing in <sighs> U.S. elections mm. is that we have allowed our elections to be privatized. We've allowed a profit margin to be right. attached to our most basic mm -hmm. civil right, mm -hmm. which is to vote mm -hmm. our conscience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for sharing um, a little bit about the lawsuit in Ohio and some of um, and I your want experience to add yeah, to in that. New York. So tell us I a little bit I just want to more, add yeah. one other p mm -hmm. piece before moving on to um, uh, California. Talking about California, yeah. yeah. Is, um, in, we are dealing with corporations run by people. All right, people behind a corporate screen, you don't know who these people are. People who have partisan concerns. For example, in Ohio in 2004, Diebold, located in Ohio, promised to Bush to deliver Ohio to Bush. Yeah. Okay, so we have people with partisan interests. And then when we want to look at the software, when we want to understand why the heck did we lose? It seemed like even in this thing with Bernie, we have thousands and thousands of people gathered, okay? What, where, where did this go? We're told this is proprietary software, and no, you can't look at it, you know? And then the additional part is that trying to look at ballots can get very difficult. There's a 30-day certification period, and, and, and observing the county of ballots is also a challenge so so you know we have a lot going against us but we have to work carefully step by step in that little motto you, you, <laughs> you like that you I'll get you a t-shirt yeah okay thank you um, and that's the way uh, we can make a difference and and Bernie did show us that something was possible and and we have to go still further. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. So we've got to run people for office, and we have got to be activists for election integrity. Mm -hmm. We have got to, de to demand transparency mm -hmm. in the system. Mm -hmm. And whether that be through open source um, software mm -hmm. coding mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, paper ballot audit, mm -hmm. we've got people that are working on mm -hmm. that in the state of California mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. um, that, is that is offering a promise. Yeah. of transparency but we know we've got a long mm -hmm. where to go mm -hmm. long way to go because open source software is nowhere near ready mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we know that it can be hacked mm -hmm. so um, that is going to be a great topic mm -hmm. for another mm -hmm. live stream which we're going to invite mm -hmm. you back for mm -hmm. but we'd like to talk a little bit more um, about the case that's pending in um, California well there's several mm -hmm. okay so um, uh, the one where there's been some real movement was put together by Citizens Oversight, and which is run by Ray Lutz mm -hmm. in San Diego with some help from Bill Simpich. Mm -hmm. I was able, through, through Trust Vote, and thank you all who have signed up and sent your emails with clear offers to help, we were able to connect that attempt to right the wrongs in San Diego with a quality attorney named Alan Girassi. Mm -hmm. And because many lawyers wrote into us, and and thank you, and keep writing into us with your offers. You know, we, we may not be able to use them right away, but we appreciate it. So um, he came in, and um, and so we have an initial. Um, uh, you know, uh, this was a this was a lawsuit that. Uh, got an initial ruling from the judge mm -hmm. that that uh, before a 1% recount can be done, that there needs to be all the ballots, including all the provisional ballots, counted. Right. And Which didn't happen no, in San didn't, Diego. Right? Especially, no. And, and, possible, and in some other places, too, some other counties. Um, and uh, in San Diego, um, uh, over a third of uh, the ballots were labeled provisional. Yeah. So, I mean, this is uh, a mockery. Yes, it is. Of, uh, of a recount. Mm -hmm. 
of a 1% recount when you take a third of your ballots away. Right. And there's even some question that they were uh, shredding right. ballots. We saw the trucks. Yeah. We saw the trucks right. outside. Right. Yeah. And uh, some of the uh, ballot, uh, the poll workers who were gathering ballots and, and or ballot management group that were hired by the county said that if a student didn't provide number mm -hmm. when they're part of the university. In our democracy, when um, we have such blatant and mm -hmm. ostentatious, mm -hmm. um, almost unbridled mm -hmm. fraud going mm -hmm. on before mm -hmm. our eyes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are hesitant to use that term, but mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people out in the Bernie community mm -hmm. have no question. Mm -hmm. A lot of us were poll workers, a lot of mm -hmm. us were precinct mm -hmm. monitors, mm -hmm. and we saw unbelievable mm -hmm. treatment mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. folks that were coming mm -hmm. in with these um, NPP ballots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can speak yeah. to that more. Yeah, please do. Um, so uh, we do have a lawsuit, and, and the lawsuit was put together by Bill Simpich against Alameda mm -hmm. County and San Francisco County mm -hmm. for uh, poor uh, poll worker training, for confusing instructions, on what they should do with NPP ballots, all right? Because we know people got a lot of different messages, didn't they, Lori? Yeah, right. And uh, and so um, uh, that's one lawsuit. And another lawsuit uh, that Bill Simpich is putting forward, and these were filed, and when they come up, we don't know, but uh, we know they were filed, is um, against Michael Vu and Secretary of State Padilla for actually violating uh, in the uh, the rights of observers mm -hmm. to watch uh, the accounting of ballots. And there are uh, clear instructions in the manual about being able to watch, but I have to say for myself, once when I, when I went to watch ballots being counted, I got to watch the back of somebody's, uh, some guy you know, and I got to watch his arm moving. And that was a waste of my time. And I, I want to see uh, ballot counting uh, legitimate and real. And I want to see our government officials trust that people can be polite. And of course, if there's some rowdy person, you take them down in, and take them out. In, in New York State, and this may have been in California too, uh, they had everybody sit so you couldn't look and see right. what was being counted and you had to be about uh, five to ten feet back or something like that. So this is a parody. Right. And, and I want to make one comment is, um, and I make it to all of you there, you know, those of you who are first time voters, this is a horrible introduction yes, to our democracy. And I am so sorry. And all we can do is work to make a change. And I, I'm almost ashamed, all right? Not personally ashamed, but ashamed for our system yes. and what it's done. Yes. And so I just wanted to speak directly to the camera to say that and to encourage you to keep remaining connected, keep making a difference. We can save this democracy yet, but it will take all of us. Thank you, Lori. Yeah. Your story. <laughs> is really resonating about being a ballot count observer. We call them BCOs of Ballots for Burning. So mm -hmm. we organized, as you know, 58 counties through Ballots for Burning mm -hmm. with our cousins in Southern California mm -hmm. um, to put grassroots teams on the mm -hmm. ground in 58 counties mm -hmm. to monitor the mm -hmm. ballot count. Mm -hmm. We did that in two weeks. We've mm -hmm. got over 900 people on our Ballots wow. for Burning page, mm -hmm. and we've actually had thousands of people that have wanted to join and folks when you don't live in California we can't let you on the page but you're here for the live stream we've got your information in our in our database if you joined ballotsforbernie.org and we're hoping that we can take this election integrity movement that we are um, lighting a fire under mm -hmm. and what I want to talk about is the activist election integrity activist we've had people that have been players in the election integrity movement that have been movers and shakers. Mm -hmm. What we have lacked 
is people on the ground as protesters, as activists mm-hmm. to show mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. Um, at your ROV office, as show up um, at your um, at the Capitol in your state, and demand mm-hmm. that um, you know these issues be addressed. So those are the folks that we're talking to, and mm-hmm. what you're what you're saying is really resonating with them. Mm-hmm. There is um, interest across the entire country mm-hmm. to move the ball forward. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Our deepest sentiment as Americans mm-hmm. is this belief mm-hmm. that we can come together mm-hmm. and as one voice make changes that are going to affect us all in our daily lives. The personal is political. Mm-hmm. Without trust in mm-hmm. our elections process, mm-hmm. that all falls to the wayside. I agree. Mm-hmm. And I want to thank you again mm-hmm. for that heartfelt experience as a ballot mm-hmm. count monitor because mm-hmm. you've got folks out all over California that are watching mm-hmm. this tonight mm-hmm. that had that same experience and mm-hmm. share that same frustration. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Lori, is there anything else that you wanted to share about these lawsuits um, that um, folks can help? Well, this is from an activist thing. standpoint. You need to know that the San Diego, uh, the the lawsuit with. Uh, a citizens Oversight Committee, although it got a preliminary judge ruling that, uh, you know, that we are going to do counting all the ballots before we do the provisional ballots, I mean, for, before we do the recount, excuse me. We're going to do all the ballot counting, including the provisionals, before doing the recount. The judge ha- feels good about this. Mm-hmm. It's called a preliminary statement. It's actually going to be set in San Diego in a three-day trial mm-hmm. uh, for this October 3rd through 6th in San Diego. And the settlement offer demands an admission of violation and a full 1% audit redo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a little late. We, we may mm-hmm. find that Bernie won if we win this lawsuit and they redo the audit. But it also makes a... Um, a you know, it also speaks to what's going to happen in uh, November. Yeah, yes, it does. And yes, it you know, even in Marin County, where I, where I live, um, I always thought Marin County would be a shining star. Well, <laughs> they're not. You know, mm-hmm. they counted, they left all the provisional ballots after they did not include them in the, the, the recount and. Also, there are some other problems that were brought up, which I need to bring forward in um, this election. We have very old machines. Yes, we do. And they're very hackable. And even in Marin County, uh, they upgraded from uh, OSEX, uh, or, you know, uh, I don't know, 99 up to 2003. And I can't even imagine using software from 2003. I mean, it's already antiquated, right? It's Especially here in the Bay Area. beyond antiquated. <laughs> <laughs> Prehistoric and, at this point, right? And we've, and we've had a lot of, um, uh, we had a lot of uh, ta- um, scanners that didn't work. Mm-hmm. We had those same complaints in Contra Costa County. Yeah. Heard and, those same complaints in Alameda, San Mateo. And, the, you know, just in one example, I mean, in, up in... Um, Pittsburgh, California, the scanner didn't work, so they made a box with a slit in it for for putting the ballots in. And we were doing exit polls outside, and our exit poll results are widely different. Yeah. So we don't even know what happened in there. Yeah. We've got a lot of work Um, to do. And actually, you know, uh, I do want to present at a later time on the exit poll that we did. Yeah. Uh, because we are going to devote an entire live results. stream to exit polls. That's it's good. That important. It That's is good. That important, and we will definitely have you back. And for that. I and I also wanted to say that when we did the exit poll and when we uh, and with the election observers, I want to say there are a lot of people that care about their elections. We had everybody. I had everybody typing in their data into right in my living room. Uh, from the the exit poll that we did of 3,120 people into computers. Uh, They were being paid a low amount of money, but everyone was happy. Mm -hmm. And I want to let you know that if we create an election system 
that allows people to participate, people will be happy, there will be more trust. This, we shouldn't live our, keep our elections, uh, leave them for the 1%. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bernie made a big point of this. Right. And mm -hmm. what was left, what was uh, omitted from the whole thing was the 1% that count our elections. Yes. And as Stalin said, it didn't matter what people vote for. It's he who counts the battle, that, the ballots that's really important. That is true. <laughs> that is true. And that is what we are here today discussing. Thank you. So, look, folks, we um, welcome your questions. Um, please let us know any questions that you have um, about the lawsuits that are pending both in Ohio and in California. Um, anything that you um, would like to know about how you can get further involved. And we'd also like to talk a little bit about our Election Integrity Conference coming up in Richmond, California, October the 8th and 9th called Take Back the Vote. That's an appropriate mm -hmm. name, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are going to be training our poll workers and our precinct monitors on what to look out for. We're going to be talking about irregularities at the polling stations. We're going to be, uh, we're going to have um, seasoned poll workers and precinct monitors who um, saw some of the wildest things imaginable in the, ele the primary election here in California, um, things that they had never witnessed in 10 years as a poll worker. And, and if you want to get familiarized, look at the uncounted, the true story of the 2016 California primary. Let me repeat that title one more time. Un uncounted, the true story of the 2016 California primary. I think that documentary really shook a lot of people up. Yeah, and deserves yeah. to, and and people deserve to be shaken. And I think that um, probably um, the the complaint that I heard the most um, from people who were sharing their experiences with us um, on ballots for Bernie, as well as on our California um, election fraud page, mm. where we've encouraged people to come and anonymously give mm -hmm. us. Um, there's, tell us their story. Mm -hmm. um, we always encourage folks to come forward. Um, mm -hmm. We um, want to know what people's stories are. We want to know. Mm -hmm. um, we encourage a lot of people, of course, to send emails mm -hmm. um, to Election Justice. Um, right. So hopefully a lot of those folks that we sent um, were able to be helpful in the lawsuits. Um, and send emails to trustvote.org. And also, we welcome your donations, and we have a specific channel for what's happening in California. Very good. So, folks, again, please send us your questions. We're here to answer them. Um, we also have Jim Soper with us today. Um, we have interviewed uh, Jim a number of times. Um, Jim, we have uh, a bill that's coming forward, um, AB 1970 which requires the Secretary of State to write new regulations concerning the processes of vote, uh, process of vote by mail and provisional ballots. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, it actually is passed. I'm not sure if it's been passed, signed by the governor yet, but this is, this is big. Um, already, Lori's, the lawsuit in San Diego that Lori is is supporting with Ray Lutz is huge because it says you're going to audit 1% of the provisional and vote by mail ballots. We've known that this has been a problem since I started in 2005. We've known this has been a problem, but we haven't had the, <clears throat> the force between people crying out, people donating to Lori's site and finding the lawyers who are going to go and take this to the judge. We found a judge who said, yeah, you got to count those. Mm -hmm. And so this is huge. Now, in the case of AB 1970, it said that it says that the Secretary of State shall write regulations about the procedures for counting provisional ballots and procedures for counting vote-by-mail ballots. Mm -hmm. And this should happen 
I think next year we have to watch out for the announcement. Normally, according to the way Sacramento operates, they have to announce that they're going to have a hearing about this and public comment can come in. The Bernie people went out and saw what was going on mm -hmm. and they know what was going on and we're hoping that through the conference we're going to get them organized mm -hmm. and come up with a list of recommendations for how to do all of this because they were on the ground looking at this and watching it not work. Mm -hmm. And with the the numbers, the sheer numbers that we'll, we'll be able to get to go to the Secretary of State's office, they have a, a hall there. Um, we want to pack that. We want to get 200 people in there and say, you need to make this transparent. You need to give us access at least to images of these ballots. You need to do a whole bunch of things. We need to go in ahead of time with organize, get our list of demands together to go in and, and recommend or urge the Secretary of State that he do these things to fill in the gaps, fill up the, uh, there are these holes in how they do things that we, that aren't transparent, yes. that aren't open to everybody. So now all of a sudden we have a, a law that says the Secretary of State is going to fill in the details about how these provisional and vote by mail ballots are going to be counted. And next year, we need to ramp up for that, and I'm looking forward to that. I think mm -hmm. it's going to be fun and interesting. Mm -hmm. So that's the first comment I have. Very good, yes. That's exciting stuff. Very exciting stuff, folks. So, um, we are still waiting for more questions to come in. Let us know anything that you would like to um, get a little deeper in that we've been talking about tonight, uh, folks. Um, and also, please, if you're just tuning into our live feed, go to trustvote.org. Take a look at what Lori and her vote warriors have been up to. Look into both of these cases and many others that are going on across the country right now and be a part of this thing. We need your interest. We need you to be calling your congressman and demanding transparency in the elections process in your state as well as here in California. We also need you to donate. Trustvote.org five bucks, ten bucks, no amount is too small. We know that as Bernie supporters we have come together and we have made history by raising the most money of any campaign in presidential politics. In May and March of 2015 we raised 46 million dollars. Think what we could do with two million dollars to demand transparency in our elections process. Think what we could do together, folks, to move legislation with your body on the line, on the grounds of the Capitol, going and talking with your legislators. Think about two, three hundred. Jim says two hundred. I say a thousand. I think we can do it. I think we can pack that state house, and I think we can make it happen. Folks, thanks so much. We've got some questions coming in. So let's see. What can people do to get ready for the general, um, for lawsuits that may be coming? We have another question. Um, what about data collection by observers? And also another question, what are some of the lessons learned um, from the debacle of this primary in California that we can get right moving forward? So Jim or Lori, either one, um, any of, e either of those questions that you'd like to take? Well, with respect to uh, getting ready for, uh, for lawsuits, I mean, the lawsuits we have, probably the one by Ray Lutz will be settled in the trial because I mentioned to you it's likely that the judge is going to approve it. Right. But uh, the one for observers uh, and the one for creating less confusing uh, instructions for NPP voters in Alameda and San Francisco mm -hmm. counties and is is in play 
And so uh, donating to these legal costs could def definitely be worthwhile at trustvote.org. Once again, that's trustvote.org. So that could help with these lawsuits. To be honest, I expect more lawsuits yes. are going to come up yes. in this coming election. And election integrity will be, you know, top headlines, in my opinion. And Won't that be great? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And part of it is you know, also Trump uh, looked at what happened to Bernie, and then he made a statement, it looks like I may lose because the election's rigged. And of course, you know, the Democrats are denying that. And I'm not saying he's going to win or anything like that. I'm just saying this brings the matter forward. And then the Democrats are feeling that the Russians are coming in and <laughs> hacking the vote totals. So they are going, and that, and that Trump is connected with Putin. So they are, there. that's going to be their side. And we may see a clash of giants. It's possible. Bring it on. Those are, right? those are other lawsuits I know nothing about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it on, right? I and think then, everybody at And then the, we all the need RTF to get educated and, yeah. about what, what, what's possible. And we've been dealing with hackable machines for the last 10 years. So it's nice to have a whole bunch of other people now right. becoming aware of it. Right. Because when this many people are complaining, it's not an issue of conspiracy theorists. Not we all right. saw what happened in the California primary. We're all very upset. And I think this anger is going to be good for us here in California. Mm -hmm. um, what happens in California goes across the country. And we're hoping that this, um, <clears throat> this anger lights a firestorm of election integrity activists all over the state who are going to join us. Mm -hmm. Again, please go to ballotsforbernie.org and check our um, events page and join us with our conference that's coming up October the 8th and 9th in Richmond, California. You'll be glad you did. We're going to have experts from the field of election mm -hmm. integrity talk to us about the history of this movement, talk to us about the problems in the 2016 election, and talk about what mm -hmm. we can do moving forward as an election integrity movement mm -hmm. to um, demand transparency in our elections. And let's get it right, folks. Let's get it right. All right, so Jim wanted to talk to us again. Yeah, uh, just a note about this past June and what did we learn? Well, among other things, and it hasn't come up too much, but some counties were taking the random selection. You're supposed to use some dice or something to have a random <laughs> selection of the precincts whose ballots you're going to check by hand. Yeah, Fresno, right? Fresno chose their precincts well before the, I think a month before the election. Of course, I heard they were flaunting that. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have a real audit with random selection if you're picking the precincts before you report <laughs> the counts. That doesn't work. We need to fix that. And I, I read through the law, and the law kind of is silent about when you do this. Right. So that's one of the things we'll be talking about at the conference, how to deal with that. Uh, another thing, just so you folks know that you have an influence, I know uh, the, the, Senate, the chairman of the Senate Elections Committee, I know the Secretary of State, I know their advisors. The advisors told me they got the message about crossover ballots. And they're going to do something about it next year or sometime in the future. The whole crossover ballot with you have to belong to a certain party to vote for your favorite person, they got the message because of you that this has to be fixed. And so keep on urging Sacramento to do the right thing and watch for this. I hope to see, we hope to see a new bill proposed in the next year or two to clean up the rules for the primary systems. There's pages and pages about how to conduct the primaries in the California Elections Code. Yeah. I hope they cut it down to one page. That would be great. <laughs> mm -hmm. And make it simple and organized and, and do it that way. Mm -hmm. And I'll make a, a, another quick comment. One of the other things we learned, uh, I had the privilege yesterday of talking to John Brakey in Arizona, yeah. and one of the things he, he learned was that Arizona does, sort of does everything as a state. And he said, you, 
They have one rule book on how to do this stuff. And he said, I want to see their rule book for California for how to observe elections. Mm -hmm. He got 58 of them. Wow. Because he has, we have 58 counties. And, and what he learned was we disorganize by county. Yes, we do. And every county has its own rule book, and it makes it important to set up county teams and learn that rule book for that county. You, there will be no hand counting of ballots at the precinct because precincts are going to disappear if the county decides to do that. So I know there are people out there who are going to want to set up groups to talk to the board of supervisors of their specific county and say, don't. Mm -hmm. Don't what? Don't go to vote centers and vote by mail. Retain the precincts. Mm -hmm. Keep the precincts because we think certain things that are happening. This is going to be a county level right. action, not state, because the counties will decide. And they also, by 450, then if they do this, they have to have hearings in detail about their plans for this. And you're going to want to get involved for how your county runs your elections. And this is county level organization. So getting organized by county is becoming even more important because that's how we do it in California. Right. Mm -hmm. right. We'd like to work to be part of changing how we do it yes. in California. We would like... Um, consistency across counties. We would like, yes, let's all pray. Uh, let's all assume the lotus position and pray for this. Um, we would like to be part of the movement here in California where um, we can institute um, best practice protocols going across all counties. What works best in Humboldt County um, might work well in San Diego as well. What works um, well in San Francisco County uh, will probably work well in every county as well. So we can do this, California. We can come together and we can demand uh, best practice protocols. Um, a lot of people have problems with using the term standardize the system. But what we are looking for, what we are begging for, is a set of standards that can be implemented in every county that every voter can count on, especially election integrity activists who become ballot count monitors and expect that have a, they need a certain level of expectation, they have a certain level of expectation of what should be happening. And we should not have to separate this into 58 different sets of information. It's um, convoluted and it is a strategy of insidious demise. When you do not have um, a system that you can count on, that you can learn, um, asking people from 58 different counties to do 58 different things is a formula for disaster and we see how that played out in the 2016 primary. So folks, thanks again for tuning in. This is Ballots for Bernie. We are live streaming here at Next Base in Berkeley with um, vote warrior Lori Grace from um, TrustVote.org. We invite you to go to Lori's website, um, TrustVote.org. Check out the lawsuits that are in play right now. Be an election integrity activist. Advocate for democracy. Come and join us. Be a part of this. We need your donations. We need your time. We need your interest. We need you to share this live stream and other live streams on your pages. We need to keep this issue of election integrity at the forefront of our Bernie supporters um, list of things to do. This needs to be at the top. So Jim, Lori, thank you again for um, sharing with us your wealth of knowledge um, and thank you for folks at home for being a, a part once again of this Ballots for Bernie live stream. We got started a little bit late today. Mm -hmm. Folks, we are raw here at Ballots for Bernie, but we are proud. And we are moving forward with demanding transparency in the system. And we want to thank you for being a part of it.